And somebody shout, sex is good. I want to hear you shout it. If, if you're having a difficulty in shouting it, then Hollywood has deceived you. Do you know why you're finding it difficult to say it? It's because Hollywood has deceived you. Why is it you can shout money is good, but you can't shout sex is good? There is a mindset you have about it. That means you have a corrupt mindset about it. Lift up your voice and shout sex is good. Lift up your voice and shout sex is good. But then that's the but. That's what I'm teaching today. But sex can abort destinies and greatness. It can destroy destinies to come. Generations and descendants to come. It can sink a family. It can sink a business. It can sink a nation. Sex is a two-edged sword. It is like a two. It's like a two-edged sword. It can bless and it can curse. That means it can be a blessing. It can be a curse. It can be productive and yet it can still be destructive. It can bring life and still it can death. It can help, yet it can hurt. It can help, yet it can harm. It can build and still it can break. Write this letter to the leader of the church in Tess Tertia. This is the message from the Son of God, whose, whose eyes penetrate like flames of fire, whose feet are like glowing brass. I am aware of all your good deeds, your kindness to the poor, your gift and service to them. Also, I know your love and faith and patience, and I, and I can see your constant improvement in all this. Yet, I have this against you. You are permitting that woman, Jezebel, who call herself a prophetess, to teach my servant that sex sin is not a serious matter. She Stay with you. read it again. Please listen. Stop reading and listen. Yet I have this against you. You are permitting that woman, Jezebel, who call herself a prophetess, to teach my servant that sex sin is not a serious what matter. Is, what is she teaching the servants of God? Sex sin is not a serious matter. Do you know what it my means? My belo it means belonging. It means ownership. So God is not talking about unbelievers. He's talking about believers. So that means if you're struggling with sexual immorality under the influence of Jezebel, you have tapped into her doctrine. He said, what is she doing? She's teaching a new doctrine that sexual immorality is not a serious sin. So, where did you get it? Jezebel taught you. You fall into sexual sin because you believe the lie. That is not a serious matter. Continue. L listening well, be listening well. Who calls herself a prophetess to teach them that sex sin is not a serious matter? She urged them to practice immorality and to eat meat that has been sacrificed to the idols. I gave her time to change her mind and attitude, but she refused. Pay now attention to what I am saying. I will lay her upon a sick bed of intense affliction, along with all our immoral followers, unless they turn again to me, repenting of their sin with her. And I will strike our children dead, and all the church and all the churches shall shall know that I I am he who, search, who searches deep, deep within man's heart and mind. I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. As for the rest of you in Tierra, 
who have not followed these false teachings deeper truths stop see where i want to hit you who has not followed this teaching what did he call it now what is in the bracket deeper truths what is in that bracket deeper truths as for the rest of you in theater who have not followed these false teachings deeper truth as they call them depth of satan really i will ask nothing further of you only hold tightly to what you have done until i come to everyone who overcome who to the who to the very end keep on doing things that please me i will give power over the nation listen if you want to receive power over nations one of the keys is sexual purity you can sit down if you sit on sexual purity one of the things is guaranteed god will give you the keys of nations if you don't understand how to be sexually pure forget about nations forget about nations now let's go into the teaching today one of the things about is that this is jesus speaking two thousand years ago and yet it's still relevant to today jesus was talking to a young man called john now most of the teachings you see in the scriptures most of the teachings you see writings in the scriptures you see they write by inspiration they interpret a vision they see a picture and they interpret it so they try to relate what they are seeing with the limited knowledge they have in their duration that time in order to demonstrate what they are seeing an example that's why you need the holy ghost to help you interpret scriptures imagine a john seeing a plane what do you think he will call it because in his generation there's nothing like plane and there is no language or word that can contain that thing he's seen that has to attribute to the future so the only thing he can call it is i saw a flying object like a bed that is massive like a house that is as big as you can call are you see so he's limited in his language because he's speaking based on his dispensation but when he came to this revelation he was not interpreting he was a scribe so he was writing word for word everything jesus was saying so jesus was standing on him and saying it and he was writing it i don't know if you get what i'm saying so that for people that will start giving you revelation he's just writing what the master is saying so he said right this says the son of god so as he was he was writing so he wrote from line to line my challenge is why would jesus be speaking of jezebel that died in first kings that means Jezebel died, but her spirit still lives. So, in the last days, one of the spirit that will ruin the church, that will even invade the church, is the spirit of Jezebel. And that's why God also has a counter attack for him, which is called the spirit of Elijah. If you read the scripture, it said, In the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. He said, Your sons and daughters will begin to prophesy and they'll begin to see vision. If you also read the first Timothy, you also see in the last days, men shall be lovers of themselves and, and lovers of money, mad and lovers of God. They will be disobedient to parents. He start telling you what the spirit of the last day will do. They will not call anything sacred. So two spirits are released in these days. Which one is only you? Which one is on you? Which one is influencing you? Now, the Jesus is talking about is the author of our salvation is the core of our message so now let's go he started looking at sex as a problem now let's go back we said sex is a blessing can be a blessing and also a cause so what is the blessing of sex number one sex is for procreation the blessedness of sex one procreation you can get that in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 when you talk how god created sex that was when God said, he said, and he blessed them and said, have children. The only way they could have sex children is because they could have sex. So sex was created by God. And one reason he created sex for what? Procreation. Because without sex, man wouldn't be able to multiply. So when he blessed them and said multiply, it was because of sex. Number two, he created sex. The blessedness of sex is that sex is created for intimacy. For intimacy. You see that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. He said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be cleaved to his wife. His wife. That word cleave means 
united, joined, hold fast, embraced. Sex is an act of bonding. Sex is the act of spiritual bonding. It's the act of soul tie. It is what connects two people. In the place of sex, that's why I said, and two shall become one. When you have sex with somebody, a part of him enters you and a part of you enters him. A time comes that what is running in him is what is running in you. So whether he's carrying spirits, they are transferred to you. Habits are transferred to you. Character is transferred to you. And if possible, even physical appearances. That's why most of the way you watch, you look at the husband and wife, they start looking like each other. So a part of them is transferred. So if you see, sleep with somebody possessed, you also transfer spirits to you. Actually, it was the, it's the technology of devil invading a nation. If devil wants to put stealing spirit, he sends a girl with a spirit, stealing spirit, to now begin to look around and sleep around. As she does it, she begins to transmit it. The plan of God, that's why God had anger with Israel and said, don't have anything to do with the Canaanites, the Ammonites. They said, why? Because through sex, whatever is them can be transmitted to you. He wants it to be among Israelites. Number three, what's the blessedness of sex? Sex is a medium for affirmation, confirmation, and reaffirmation of marriage. Wedding is a ceremony. Marriage is not a ceremony. Marriage does not take place on wedding day. You didn't get what I said. Marriage does not take place on wedding day. When you stand before the church and say, I take this man to be my beloved husband, to love and to cherish, in sickness and in health, to death do us part, I do. Everybody claps. You have not married before God. You just married before men. Wedding is paripasu for men. You go to court and you put ring in his hand. And they tell you some terminologies, legal termination, terminologies. Before the eyes of God, you're not married. You just go wedded legally so that the state can see you and recognize you as somebody married. When you drink that wine and people shout and clap and you dance him to the chair and sit down in the chair and stand up and dance, you didn't marry before God. You married before your traditional people, your village people. The only time you get married is when you lie on the bed. That's when marriage is born. Number four, which is the last one I'll talk about, then we'll go into the other things. Sex is created for physical pleasure. A marriage is to give pleasure to the married. That's why I said sex is sweet. But, Sons of Solomon chapter 1, verse 2 May he kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is better than wine. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18. That the breast of the wife of your youth may satisfy you. That you may drink your water from your own crystal. Sex is for. Take it away. It's for physical pleasure. Take it away. Take it away. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. Take it away, take it away, take it away, NIV, take it away, oh, take it away. Father, whatever is in me that is not reflecting your glory, take it.
Lord, take it away. Take it away. Listen, look at the screen as I read. Very important read. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. That's God's will. Father, what is your plan for my life? No, what's your plan? Stay sanctified. It's God's will. Father, show me your plan. Your plan. This is his plan. Be sanctified. Be clean. Lord, I want to know your plan for my life. Live a holy life. That is with his plan. He said, that you should avoid sexual immorality. The plan for God is not only when you see yourself speaking with microphone on stadium and talking to crowd. God is not concerned about crowd. He's more concerned about what you have with him. He is first before. That's why he said that his desire was to call them to be with him. That he might. That he might. So sending you is secondary. Primary stay with me. That's why God was so crazy about it. He captured Eunuch. God is so, he said, for the spirit of God, you lost that after you. He was so lost after him that he kidnapped him from the earth. Took him away from the earth. God's greatest desire is your marriage. That's why at the last day, the last day is a marriage feast. And the church, all of us at the church, where he will stand and we will watch a wedding, the greatest, most expensive royal wedding. For he shall present unto him a glorious church with that sprinkle. So that means on that day, the Holy Ghost will hold the church. The church will be covered in white and hold him. And the angels will be singing and will be taking a walk. And Jesus will be standing before the Father waiting for his bride. So what we every time we wait, we remind him of what he will do in the future. God the Father, like the priest. God the Son, the husband the church, the, the wife. So God's greatest desire is to marry you. Take it away. Take it away. is you is called the fruit of self-control listen to me no car is constructed without brake it will never run on the road when god constructed you put a brake in your life it's called self-control the ability to say no i can't say no no what the hell will teach you i didn't know i fell into it keep falling it's your destiny your own. keep falling he touched me and I fell in. Keep falling. On Sunday, I'll be teaching three greatest enemies. The lion, the bear, and Goliath. What do they mean? David killed three enemies. Conspicuous, specific, unique enemies that you can't deny. They were outstanding. He fought the lion. He fought the bear. And he fought Goliath. What does each of them represent? We hear it on Sunday. Continue verse 5. Not in passionate loss like the hidden who does not know God. So whenever you're living in immorality, you're living like somebody that doesn't know God. You can be a son of God, but at that time, you're practicing, I don't know God. You're a prodigal son, don't prodigal, living a righteous life. You're a lion, you're a lion, yet you're eating dead meat with pig. You're running in, you carry the nature of a lion, but you're behaving in the nature. Of a pig, don't an echo, but you're eating dead meat with vultures. You're losing your hair and you're looking ugly. Though in you, you carry the nature of a, 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 an echo, but in your body, you're demonstrating a vulture. Somebody steals you and calls you a vulture. You're not a vulture, you're an echo, but you're by nature, you've been translated to look like an, a vulture. There are two ways to create an identity nature and nurture. You eat dead meat. You sleep around and yet you're speaking in tongues. You're behaving like a hidden, a person that does not know God. Now see what God says. God is speaking. He said, God the Lord. So it's not God, it's not the Holy Ghost. The Lord will punish. What is punish? Come. Give me a chair. Let me show you something that the Spirit of God showed me today. Who said in Luke chapter 8? 
we'll come back to this scripture of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 6. In Luke chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible shared something so deep. He said, and, and this Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. Verse 2. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, Mary Madeline, from whom seven devils were casted out. I kept looking for scripture. When did Jesus cast it out? I didn't see it. Then the Holy Ghost opened my eyes. That one day, Jesus entered the house of Mary and Martha. And when he entered the house, he sat down and he was teaching. And the Bible said, Mary sat and was listening to the word. Martha was running around. Running around and came to complain. And Jesus looked at and said, you see this thing she has received in this time. Nobody can take it away. It was at the time she was listening to the word that the seven spirits were casted out. Listen, let's go. In, in, in Psalm chapter 107 verse 20, he shows us a mystery, ancient mystery. In Psalm 107 verse 20. Can we all read it? Give it to me in King James. King James. Can we all read it? Read it aloud. And what? And what? So that means the mystery of deliverance is by the word. So when he sends his word, his word comes to do two things. He heals men. That means as I'm teaching now, somebody's being healed. You are not shouting amen like a believer. Himself. And somebody's been there. So his mystery of deliverance. The Bible said he was in prison until his word came. He was locked up with shepherds. So, no matter what has possessed my soul and spirit, whatever has possessed my, my, my family, if I can only sit at his feet and consistently be drenched and drowned in his word, my deliverance is guaranteed. So, as Mary was sitting, he was teaching. The first spirit left. She kept saying, that spirit keep pushing, I live here, I live here. Because spirits don't want to leave the body. They need the body to exist on earth. But she refused. She sat. I see the lion. Oh, I see the lion. I worship 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 the lion. So as he was teaching, the second one left. The third one left. And when Jesus had finished, she was free. Lift up your hands. I want to speak to 200 people. By the word of God, you are delivered. If you can shout amen like thunder, you're the one I'm talking about. By the word of God, you are delivered. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Go back to verse 6. Let's continue my speaking and teaching. Kebo komanya kia na masato bakia NIV. Koma kama koki na katasi ya kia sasa. And there is this matter. No one should wrong his brother and take advantage of him. The law will punish. I told you I wanted to check the meaning of punish. Let me check the meaning of punish. Let's see if we can get the meaning. Or what does it mean to punish? To punish means to impose a penalty for a fault. To impose a penalty. Punish means to make someone suffer. Huh. Punish means to treat someone in a harsh manner. So the Lord will treat you in a harsh manner when it comes to sexual morality. Treat you in a harsh manner. Verse 7. Verse 7. For God did not call us to be unpure, but to live a holy life. Verse 8. Therefore, everybody read it. Please wait. Everybody read it now. So every time you're committing sexual immorality, you're rejecting God. Hear truths of God's word. So that you don't stand up and look at God in the eyes and say, God, why did I catch HIV? So that you don't rise up when you're married and say, Lord, I can't give birth because I don't have a womb. 
without knowing staphylococcus that has been hidden for years has eaten up your womb. So you can't be a young guy and say, Lord, why can't you give me a child? I won't serve you. For what? You had already contacted one of these sexual transmitted diseases that hid in your sp spermatogos and ate up every sperm in your and gave you low sperm count. You don't open your mouth to insult God because you're not giving birth. Because when he was saying that you should not do it, you broke a law. You stood up and you resisted God. You say, God help you. You say, get out, leave me. Leave me. Leave me. Let me enjoy myself. Leave me. Don't stop me. This two minutes pleasure I must get. And God is holding you and says, son, daughter, this will destroy you. This is an aim for your future. The enemy is aiming the throne for you, your throne. Leave this girl. You can overcome it. He said, no, leave me. And later, when the consequences come, you stand with audacity, angry with God. You need to come back and start crying, God, have mercy, have mercy. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Let me read these scriptures before we go. What are the things we lose? We fall into sexual immorality. Do I look just like you? Until my only guess is you, Spirit, keep brooding over me. Do I look just like you? Until my only guess is you. Until my only guess is you. Spirit keep brooding over me. Till I live just like you. My life is yours. Holy Spirit, do what you want. Holy Spirit. showing you that each of these creatures and demons and these three things that will go fight us each of them God has a special anointing on us for them but one of them he pours anointing on you to run away from it <laughs> he didn't anoint you to fight it he poured anointing on you and what was the anointing for to give you Elijah grace to run faster than a chariot that is what Joseph taught us. That there are fights you don't fight, you run. But the run is a fight. That running is what shows you're victorious. Sunday is going to be great. All of that sin is a man commits are outside his body. But he that sins sexually sins against his body. 19. When I'm talking sexual immorality, don't be saying, I'm a virgin, I've not slept with anybody. While your hands can't leave your private parts. I've not slept with any woman. <laughs> Masturbation is sex with yourself. Let me shock you. Masturbation evokes death. You're spilling your seed on the ground. So death is ignited. You might not die physically, but something dies. A portion of your prayer life dies. A portion of your passion for God dies. A portion of your destiny dies. Your appetite for greatness dies. Pressure is pleading for sure. He 
you that loves pleasure will plead for sure in the future. That's why you will be a poor man. He sucks me to do. Read my books on Secret of Stars. Even Bill Gates is not the womanizer. He's still faithful to one woman. I've tipped more of the stars, many of them. They have control of their sexuality because there is a pipe that controls sexuality with mentality. So whenever you're touching here, you're shifting here. There is a connection. It was from talking that taught us that when you hold here, you lose here. We want to see you and your spirit fill the church again. Holy Ghost, come and fetch up. We want to see Jesus and your spirit, Lord, in your church. Hey! Holy Ghost, come and fill your church. I say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, come and your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you whom you have received from God that you are not your own 20 you were bought at a price therefore honor God it's your body the last scripture 1 Corinthians 3 16 that you yourself are God's temple and God's spirit lives in you. 17. If anyone destroys God's temple, if you read it in it say, if anyone defies in the living translation, if anyone defies God's temple, what do you say? He said, God will destroy you. Let me tell you, anything you do to God, God doesn't get angry. But if you touch the Holy Ghost, you see God's anger. You know why? He's the only man that is on earth now. Jesus is in heaven. God is in heaven. Holy Ghost is here. Without him, God can't do anything. Without him, Jesus can be magnified. So he's the magnifier of Jesus and performer of God's word. That is why even God was handicapped, couldn't do, but the Bible said the Holy Ghost was over him. When he now spoke, he now started walking. So without the Holy Ghost, it's as if living with our hands. So God, the hand of God is the Holy Ghost. Without the heart, no water can be drunk. No food can be, nothing can be made that was made. So the Holy Ghost is the hand of God. Ah! So if you deal with my hand, I will kill you. Holy Spirit. Let's run through them. Number one, write my birth right. Write this thing because you will teach it to your grandchildren. Write it down. Birth right. Genesis 14, verse 1 to 3. A day of blessing. A day of rejoicing. A day of celebration. A day that has been waited for for over 70 years. Then Jacob called for his son and said, gather around so I will tell you what will happen in your days to come. Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, my first time of my strength. Excelling in honor and in power. Come What the birthright carries. Honor and power. Fathers boast of their first son. First of all, mean you represent me. 
you carry everything I carry and you walk in everything I walk even in a greater dimension if I'm not around and you're around it's as if I'm around yeah. first born. the next verse turbulent as water King James said unstable as water you will not excel for you went to your father's bed and defied it Whenever you defy, you impart in your spirit the spirit of instability. One of the spirit that enters you when you start falling to sexuality is the spirit of instability. An unstable man can never succeed. He that holds the plow and looking back is not worthy of greatness. It takes four costs to become great. What is bad right? If you read in Exodus 4.22, God told Moses, he said, go and pay Pharaoh to let my son, that Israel is my firstborn, let him go. And if you don't let him go, I will kill the firstborn of anything in your heart, in your life. Everything that is a firstborn in your life, I will kill it. And when Pharaoh did not agree, one night God came, killed all the firstborn, including ants. Everything that was living in Israel lost their firstborn. Let me talk about this. There are Christians when they go to shrine and call their name once, they appear seven times. They will, be, they will impart them with infirmity, the destruction, and destroy them. But there are Christians when you call their name, confusion enters the camp. Those people, their firstborn status is still intact. There are people whose names have married the name of Jesus. When you call their name, whatever Jesus can do, the name does. Have you ever had people in Proverbs say, the God of Bishop Oyedebo? And something happens. There are people that by work with God, their firstborn potential birthright is working. Firstborn birthright means the jealousy of God is in for your behalf. Somebody touches you, a lecturer marks you down, God visits him. Ah! But you can collect people's phone and nothing happens. You can collect people's land and nothing happens. Christians are losing their firstborn birthright. Why? Sexual immorality. It's a eater of firstborn. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from immorality. Depart, see, he depart. Go to the next verse. King James. He starts saying, In God's house, I know who I am. I am the son of God. There are many vessels in the house of the Father. <laughs> so, in the kingdom, there are vessels that are gold, there are vessels that are silver, there are vessels that are wood. Then, in the kingdom, in the house of God, there are people. That are of honor and are people of dishonor. There are people that every time God looks at them, He says tears. There are people that whenever Jesus looks at them and remember his sacrifice, he will just cry. And say, He's causing me pain. He's misrepresenting me. Why is it that whenever a son derails, a father cries? He's demonstrating what happens in heaven. The heart of God is bleeding. The, 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 the castles of Jesus is bleeding again. Whenever you're watching that porn and pornography and walking away, they say, sick. You're tearing that wound again. You're reminding him of that pain. That is why there are sons that bring honor. There are sons that bring dishonor. There are sons that kill the name of the family. There are sons that give good name to the family. This is my beloved son in whom my heart is well pleased. The next verse. The next verse. If a man, sir, listen, it's not God who will do it for you. Pastor, I won't do it for you. Your cell leader won't do it for you. If a man, if he found a favor, if peace, if blessing, we put herself for himself from iniquity, from immorality. 
sanctified, he will be meet for master's use. Listen, there are people God will never serve to the generation. God, use me, use me, use me. God say you're not useful. You're too dead. Go and wash. Go to Jordan and dip seven times. So still dead. I can't. I am a man of excellence. I will not show mediocrity to generations. God, give me the mic. Let my voice be heard in the nations. No, son, you will disgrace me. At the point of big this thing, they will show. A, they will set a trap with a gear for you, and they will put video and see you sleeping, and they will post it on social media. And more than two hundred thousand people will say, "So Christianity is a scam." So a lot of people will lose. So God says, "Stay in mediocrity. Stay in the backside of the desert. Stay underground." Why? Protein is not a joke. You tear things. You use iron. Do you see when you punch the back of a pot? You use iron sponge. You use sand. You use vim. Harsh things are used for punching. If a man punches himself, are you punching yourself? Punch. Number two. What do I lose? The crown. These ones are hungry. These ones are tasty. They are hungry to drink this bowl of fire. These ones are hungry. These ones are tasty. They are hungry to drink this bowl. Ruben lost the crown. He was the firstborn. But inside of the firstborn was also a crown. Now, by his instability, God said, no, you can't produce people that will become leaders for my nation. So see what First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 2 says. Or oh, we can read from verse 1. Are you looking? He said, now the sons of Reuben. See, do you know my greatest pain? If what happens to sexual immorality lives with only me, there's no problem. But you know my fear? It goes down to 10 generations. It keeps going down. See, do you know when you serve I do? The iniquity is visited to four. But sexual immorality goes to 10 generations. See, a man slept to somebody. His children lost the throne. He said, for the sons, sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defied the father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph of Israel and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after let me shock you have you read that scripture that said do not be as the fornicator Esau who for a morsel of meat um, bread, bread sold his birthright so why did he sell his birthright immorality that scripture is showing that immoral mindset made me not to place value on birthright so he that's why I said sexuality affects mentality. He lost it. Jacob grabbed it. Look at verse 2. Verse 2. For Judah prevailed above him, his brother, and of him came the chief ruler. So the crown was taken and given to Judah. Let me read that scripture to you. Revelation 3.11. Please, can everybody read? Everybody, please look up and read. Read aloud. So your crown can be taken. This is Jesus talking now. Thy man can lose his crown. And what makes you lose it? Sexual immorality. So every time he finds he's saying, give me one more time. What is he saying? Give me your crown. Give me one more time, just this last one. What is he aiming? Your crown. He has made us kings, but you can be a king without a crown. He doesn't have a problem that you're a king, but the only thing is that you won't have a crown. So when you don't have a crown, nobody will recognize you as royalty. So when they see you, they think you're a poor man. 
because the crown is what shows you a king. When you watch him, anybody's the, the crown. Even if you walk in that day and look, you know. So that's why when you carry your crown, you walk into a place, people see and say, you're a great person. They just keep talking, you're a great. You see, even prophets, even a man that does not have vision will start calling you. Why? There's a crown. He's talking about the force of placement. The first one is the force of preservation. This one is the crown is the force of placement. Place you on top. I don't want to go deep into it. Let me show you. <laughs> Joseph is a mysterious man. Joseph knew this thing. When the woman was said, come and sleep with me. Joseph did like this. He was holding his crown when running. They took his shirt. Take my shirt, but you can't take my crown. So he was holding his head when he was running. <laughs> take my shirt. Take my knicker. I don't care, but don't take my crown. If Joseph had slept, he could have lost his crown. I would never be a prime minister. The crown is for the royal throne. So he had it. They might laugh at you. You're still a virgin. Laugh at you. You're not sleeping around. They are giving their crown. You're keeping your own. Don't worry. There is a day of showing. 10 years is not far. 20 years is not far. <laughs> Some people are eating their glory and very sweet to finish. But you, you're gathering your own. Number three. What do you lose? When you fall into sexual immorality. I hope I'm blessing somebody. It's very good. Let's go back to the story of yesterday. You remember the story about Tamar, who got married to the first son of Judah, and he, because he was wicked, God killed him. The second brother took over to produce a seed that would keep his name, and he slept with her. When it was time to release, he poured it on the ground. God killed him. Then Judah said, "Go back home. Stay with your parents. When my third son grow up, I'll call you." I never called her. So one day. Judah was going to go and bury his in-law. They were sharing sheep. And on his way, he was going. She had his coming. Went and dressed like a prostitute. And remember, prostitutes in those days, they covered their face. So when he saw her, so why did she dress like a prostitute? Because she knew that Judah lost women. He knew that Judah sleeps with prostitutes because he only tempts somebody with something that draws him. You are tempted because of your lust. So he came in and said, what do you give to me? He said, I'll give you a lamp. He said, where's the lamp? Sam, not with it, I'll send you. He said, no, what will you give me now? He said, I'll give you my signet ring, my staff, and my bracelet. So, he removed it first and removed his clothes. After sleeping, went back. Sent his friend with the lamp. The friend came, looked for her, he didn't see her, and went back. Then you can know the remaining rule. Whenever you want to have sex, you are not just removing your shirts. Shirt is ex is outward expression. There is something you are removing in the spirit, and one of them is your signet ring. So, in the process of having sex, you first remove it. What is your signet ring? To explain your signet ring, I will have to tell you a little story again. In Esther, a man called Haman wanted to harm Jews. So, what did he do? He started casting lots. He met his goddess and his native doctors to get the particular best time to kill them. So they told him when. So he now went to the king. I said, only king. There are these people whose lifestyle is contrary to us. We need to take them away. I want you to sign papers so that they will be destroyed. And I will give 10,000 gold to your treasure. The king looked at him. Say, hold your money brought out his signet ring gave to him and said use it and take silver from the treasure do whatever you want with them signet ring means something very important in the old days they don't have signature so what do they do when they write a letter they bring candle wax you know wax and pour it colored wax when the wax is poured, they now take their ring. Their ring has mark, marks. Unique mark attached to him. And put it on the wax. And remove it. When it's cold, it reflects that image here. When you see the letter, you know who wrote it. Because it's signature. 
So what does it mean? Authority. Not just authority. It also means identity. Because until I see it, I won't know who wrote it. So in immorality, you lose identity in the spirit. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? The worst thing that can happen to your life is to be a man with that identity. Any police can arrest you. And there are demons looking for who to arrest. A man with an identity can be arrested. And a man with an identity can be arrested by demons. Sons of Skiva, they were dealt with. Why? They had no identity. I'm going to tell you something that will shock you that the Spirit of God puts into my spirit. I can have one million in the account. I said, Mario, I just want to help you. I want to bless you. And I write a check of 10,000 I give to you. If I forget to sign it, if you go to the bank, though I have one million, they will give you the money. Why? There is no authorizing signature. And there is no identification of this check to be signed, given by the man. But let me show you that thing. But if I can forge your signature and I have your check, I can sign it and go and withdraw your money, even without you. <laughs> so what does it mean? In sexual immorality, I'm giving authority for demons to withdraw from my destiny. Check it. Every time you fall into immorality, check that season. Passion for God is withdrawn. If you used to pray two hours, you see you will struggle. Except you start crying for mercy. You know the technology to be redeemed. Check it. Check, on. check how the devil will withdraw your peace. If you come and I start looking at you somehow, you start saying, it's like Pastor Knife, I'm coming from a man's house. And this one, your conscience will be breaking you. Guilt will be following you. You will not have peace. You won't have joy. And still, it's almost like you lose your righteousness. And righteousness, peace, and joy is the Holy Ghost. It's the kingdom of God. So you lose a portion of the kingdom. So you see, devil just withdraws. Kiss me. You tell a lie. Every time Samson slept with a woman, something was withdrawn. If you had 100% to say no, change percent goes in the eight. That's it. A time will come, you can't say no. Every time you watch porn, if something is being withdrawn, a time will come. That time you watch porn will reach. You can't say no. Even if you don't have money, you will steal. You borrow. You will lie. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Number four. Your favor is real. I testify. Your favor is real. The first one is signature. The next one is what? Bracelet. Oh, well, I'll finish by 7 times. Ezekiel 16 11. What's the first one? What did I call it? Force of preservation. The number two is what? What do I call it? Force of placement. The third one is what? I'm not here. The third one is what? Force of what? Identification. Number four. Bracelet. Ezekiel chapter 16.
also with ornaments. And I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. Give me verse 10 first. Go to verse 9. Give it to me, Message Bible. Do you know why it is this? You were in sin. Jesus speaks to you. And he's talking to you. I give you a good bath. I washed up all that old blood. I anointed you with aromatic oil. I dressed you in colorful gown. I put leather sandals on your feet. I gave you a linen blouse. A fashionable wardrobe of expensive clothing. I adore you with worries. I placed breathless on your waist, wrist, fitted you out with a neckness. I stopped there. Do you know what he's talking about? This is the good Samaritan talking to the person. He said, I met you on the road when you were beaten by robbers. They beat you, men passed you. I came, I left what I was doing, picked you, washed you, cleansed you, and I put bracelet. Do you know what the bracelet is? I'm signifying beauty. I beautified you. So, what am I talking about? The force of attraction and beauty. Sexual immorality does and turns you to a The glory has departed. Look at every young girl that's commits sexual immorality. At 14, she starts getting old. You look at her and you ask her, she tells you I'm 14. She says a lie, you're looking 25. Why? Sexual immorality brings old age. It hastens your aging. And aging is a is the one of the things that sin has done to man. Every man sleeping with you is pouring debts. You are accumulating debts. So what happens? Your body starts lapsing. That's why too much of sex will start making your breast sag. Your buttocks will start dropping. Why? Sexual immorality. You look older than your age. Why? Your glory is being torn. You go to meetings and you're wondering why they're not seeing you. You before, when you come, everybody looks at you. Why are they doing Let's have a piece of your glory. There are glory eaters. So, that was what they were doing to Samson. They were eating his glory. The time will come, you'll be naked. Man was clothed with glory. When he sinned, he became naked. Suddenly he looked and said, ah! I am naked so you can be naked by sexual immorality the glory of God over your life is torn so you are not quenching the glory and beauty does it shock you you tell some people you are born again and they say how can do you know why you are naked how can you say you are born again we don't see anything in you that describes born againism you come and tell your cousins you're born again, they start laughing at you. Look at this one. Raise up your hand. After today, your glory is restored. If you shout amen like thunder, you're the one I'm talking about. Number five. Staff. Remember, he lost three things. What did he lose? Signet ring. They are rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Exodus 4 verse 17. Moses with thy rod you shall do signs. Rod talks about power. Psalm 66 verse 3. Say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies be submitted unto you. So staff is force of power. Listen to me. Every time you fall into sexual immorality, you lose power. 
every young man that sleeps with you, every young girl that sleeps with you is eating up your power. Delilah was the last one that finished the last plate in Samson. Samson stood up and did like this. You know why you're laughing? You have never had a confrontation with witches. You have never had a confrontation with demonic forces. I shine in the name of Jesus and they start laughing at you. Then you will know what it means to be robbed of power. You're confronted with assassins. You're confronted with ritual killers. They cut off the rapper's head. Everyone ritual killers kill, cut their neck, shouted Jesus. Everyone ritual killers kill, shouted Jesus. But there was no power. Why is it out of five, one person shouts and they will not stagger and say, take this one away? That means he's still loaded. Powerlessness is deadly. Sexual immorality robs you of your power. You go out, you become a vehicle without fuel. You can't go far in life. You need power to make progress in destiny. So you're in one place. 30 years in one place. Many of our fathers and mothers, this is what kept them in one place. Don't repeat what they repeated. Before you lead worship, people will fall down. Now you will worship, people will stay like this. Till you finish. Why? Masturbation. From 100, you're in 40%. You don't know that anointing burns. Anointing is oil. It's like oil. So he burns. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. Why do you think Jesus will go in the night and pray? It's to refuel. He said that he will anoint my hair with fresh. Means new. So every day, when we come here, we are refreshing. Every morning, is filling station. You can't run today with yesterday's oil. Your tank is empty, you still want to move. And you're still pressing throttle when the engine is off. I'm wondering why the car is not moving. Go to filling station. Go and cry. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I receive power. Speak in tongues now. Speak in tongues. I say, Lord, I am refreshed. Speak in tongues loudly now so that you can be refreshed. As you go to the sixth one. Just pray in tongues aloud. Pray in tongues aloud. Receive fresh fire. Is somebody receiving fresh fire? Ah, Jesus, you that have lost be restored this is a restoration service that's what we're taking this is pure wine and the flesh because it's drinking into the word of god as you eat the flesh and drink the blood you become a part of jesus i say everything jesus carry i carry jesus is a restorer he restores i don't want to know everything that happened in the past dies now today a new life is starting number six what do I lose? 
coat of many colors. God, where are you bringing all these things from? I'm not making progress. No wonder everything has been shown to me is as if I'm not leaving them out. Prophecies are looking like prophet lies. No wonder. No wonder. Genesis 37, 37 verse 3. Jacob called Joseph and gave me a coat of many colors. Do you know what he did? When he put the coat, something was put on him. His brothers took the coat, but they didn't take what was on him. Because he was undefined and uncorrupted and unpolluted and maintained his integrity and sanity in the sight of God. His spiritual coat of many colors could not be taken. What is this coat of many colors? It speaks for you. It's a force of honor. And I will explain. It's a code in the spirit that draws honor. Some of you notice it. You come into a company that have 50 people. When you come, the boss will like you out of the 50. You enter an organization today. People have been there for five years. They have not been respected or noticed. You have not stayed to two months. They'll know you. Give you responsibility. Making you an envy. People get angry. I thought if I stay long enough, that's supposed to honor me. Why don't No, 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 no. His coat of many colors is still working. You have done your own. It's a code of respect. Out of everyone, you're pulled out of the crowd and put to start in front of the crowd. You're brought to no man sits down until he comes. No man moves and eats until he comes. And you call from the backside of life, and everybody stands, waits for you to come. Cut up many colors. Even if you're in the prison, in the palace, it will take you to the palace, it will keep calling you to the top coat of many colors is a, is a forward push. It will keep dragging you till you be on top or to be ahead. No matter what men and where men put you, you'll be on top. Joseph was sold. And that's what he said as a slave. Coat of many colors said no. Even as a slave, he should be a slave with a difference. He became the chief slave. He was thrown in prison. He said no, your coat of many colors, you must be the chief prisoner. He was giving the whole prisoners in contact. And when he came to Egypt, he became the head of Egyptians. It will always push you to the top. Many girls were out. All of them were virgins. Not every virgin is a pure virgin. But a coat of many colors. Brought out Esther. And she was chosen. And she became the queen. It signifies you out of the crowd. It brings you to a level of greatness. It brings significance to you, importance. It places value on you. God of medical is a crazy thing. In the set of the, do you know what it does? It gives the king a dream and gives you the interpretation and removes it from the mind of everybody. And nobody will know it until they find you. So, God of many colors is a problem creator, but gives you the solution to the problem. He writes on the wall. And make sure nobody can tap it except you. And you come and you say, Mene, Mene, take it off a cell. And you tap it. Then you, you now receive the physical one again. <laughs> because when Joseph was brought out of prison, the first thing they did was to check his, change his garment. When uh, Daniel finished, they changed his garment. God is about to change your garment. I have a question for you. Where is your coat of many colors? 
Second Samuel chapter 13 verse 18. No one measures the greatness of man. Hey, no one measures the greatness of man. No one measures the greatness of man. No my brother, look. Ammon took a sister, raped her. This showed the mystery. And kicked her out. See? And she, before he raped her, the Bible says she had a comment. Can we read it? Everybody read it. Uh, what does it mean? Continue. Stop there. At where? So you see, sexual purity is what gives you that garment. The only people that wear it is that are virgins. But see what happens. He said, Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door. Look at what happens the next day. The next verse. I agree. See, when she was raped, she physically demonstrated what happened in the spirit. She tore the garment. Even if you have been raped and your garment has been torn, Jesus is still a teller. I speak over someone that has been raped or whatever has happened. I speak, God is restoring your garment. Everybody shout, Amen. No matter, I say, God is restoring your garment in the name. Shout, Amen, like thunder. She taught it to demonstrate what happened this week. You know when I was talking, remember in Isaiah 61 verse 3 that the Bible said, don't go there. He said, he give you beauty. So whenever your bracelet goes, what happens? Ashes come on your head. And you see her showing it here by putting ashes on her head because her beauty has been stolen. Let me tell you something. Do you remember the daughter of Jacob? That Shechem raped. Did you ever read anything about her again? See the next verse, you'll be shocked. Next verse, read. Wait, did he jump it? Please read the last verse. The last, see the one I want you to read. See, everybody lift up your voice and read. What does it mean? Destiny aborted. Subjected Tama and the daughter of Jacob, we didn't hear of them again. This is the daughter of a king, a priest is supposed to come and marry her, but she died in Absalom's house. How many of you have torn your garments? Cut of many colors. Sharing that garment after today, as we take the communion, your garment will be restored. You're not shouting at me like you know, that's how I said. Do you know what the Bible said? He said, When the son cried out and said, Father, forgive me, he said, Bring garment, wait on him. If you will return to the Lord, first thing he does is that he gives you a new garment. Remember Zachariah when they removed the, the filthy garment, what did they give him? A white garment. One thing God always does when you restore back to him, he gives you a new garment. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I receive a new garment. Shout it, Lord. I receive a good garment. I want to shout it, Lord. I receive a new garment. In the name of Jesus. And the last one as we close. So what is that garment? The garment is the force. Force of honor. Then the last one, 
What do you lose? You lose your eyes. Pastor, why are you not talking about her? The Bible said in 1 Corinthians that the hair of the woman is her glory. So when they cut the hair of Samson, he lost the glory. So that means he lost his bracelet. So the bracelet is the glory. So that's why I didn't talk about it. Are you getting everything now? So the eye. If I go, I we don't have time. If I go to Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 6 and 7, you see that what the woman is looking for is the precious life. One of the things that they are looking for is your eyes. The ability to see beyond the natural realm. The ability to see what God sees and how God sees. What am I talking about the eyes? First of vision. Judges chapter 16 verse 21. The first thing they attacked when they caught Samson after they cut his hair was they plucked his eyes. When you can't see God's dream, when you can't run God's dream, you will be a slave to the system of this world. See what happens. Let me show you. But the villagers took him and plucked out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with the fetters of brass. Let me tell you as a Christian, you will remain a slave to the system of the world until you are visionary. Ah, you think what I said? You will remain a slave to the world until you are visionary. Out the men like thunder. Lift up your hands. I speak over you. The mark of your birthright is restored. If you shout amen, it will happen to you. I speak over you. The mark of your birthright is restored. I please, I declare over you the mark of your birthright is restored. Number two, lay hands on your head. My crown, my Lord and my King. My crown that has been stolen. Let it be restored. The force of the force of placement is restored to me. Can you pray that prayer? Daughters of, daughters of Zion, Jesus, every crown of righteousness, every crown of royalty that has been stolen from my destiny, I declare it restored by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare it restored. as if you're in darkness. A man in darkness cannot be seen. Arise, shine, for the light is come. And the glory of God is risen upon you. Verse 2. He said, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon you and the glory of God shall be seen on you. I thought somebody shouting him. Raise up your hand. Say, Lord, my glory is restored. My breast is restored. I begin to declare favor. I begin to declare attraction and beauty of my life and family. My glory as a pastor. My glory as a student. My glory as a businessman. Oh! 
hands And in my whole life Be expressions of your love My staff of authority, my staff of power be restored. Can you fire that prayer now? coat of many colors my coat of many colors my force of honor be restored 
Ah, the Holy Ghost is when people coat up many. Raise up your hand now. See the Spirit of God. There are four ladies. The Holy Ghost is about to clothe with coat of many colors now. Jesus, Jesus, look at them. Holy Ghost, yes, Holy Ghost. Look, there are four ladies, four ladies, four ladies. See the Holy Ghost wearing you the coat of many colors now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now. Spirit of the living God. Yes, 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 yes. Look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them now. Your family is being restored. Your family is being restored. The glory of your family now, now, now. Lord's glory is being restored now, 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 now. Lift up your voice and cry out now. This be restored now. told me that in the dream he will show you what he has restored it's only those that shouting amen that I know that I believe what I you'll be having encounters you will see yourself in dream collecting back you will, you'll be shocked at the authority you will use some of you will visit even your village you'll be visiting places and you discover you're collecting things what you will see yourself with a staff bracelet you will see yourself if you see yourself collecting the glasses your vision you collected it back Close your eyes, Kabaki Anama. My eyes, my eyes. Shut my eyes. My vision is restored. Come on, I need someone to shut it. Away. Say my eyes. My vision is restored. Yes, 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 yes. The fire of God is about to do that. Shut my eyes. My vision is restored. Cry aloud, cry aloud, cry it aloud. Begin to cry it aloud.